Paulo. I'm from uh, Brazil. Brazil, thank you. <laughs> and this part here, we're already in the city of Natori, which is where the airport is located. Uh, already this area was an area affected by the tsunami. The tsunami, yeah, as you know, it, it flooded the airport and um, Luckily, people who were in the airport, as far as I know, none of them lost their lives, but uh, they had to stay here for about three to four days. During the March 11th uh, disaster, the damage caused by the earthquake wasn't very big, but mainly the damage caused by the tsunami was so here inside the airport, we estimated that the height was yeah, yeah. three meters. And when the tsunami hit, you had customers, you had staff, and you also had people from uh, surrounding areas, uh, especially also elderly from uh, uh, elderly houses yeah. oh, also came here. Yes. These people from elderly houses that came here, was it planned? I mean, that they, did they know that they should go here in case of a tsunami or was it... Uh... During the day of the tsunami, uh, the top management of these elderly houses uh, decided that here would be okay. safer. Yeah. So they came here, but without any uh, warning. They didn't yeah. let them know that they would be coming. Ah, yeah. Yeah. The airport was not before a, sh a shelter, right? So how did they organize electricity, water? They could provide all the food that they could, but water was a bit of an issue, so they could only provide a small pet bottle per meal. So uh, they think that, well, it, it wasn't enough, but that's what they could do. And was there electricity during the time, or...? So when the airport hit, uh, electricity uh, went down uh, immediately, but they had uh, generators. Uh, but these generators stay in a machine room, which is just behind here, so when the tsunami hit, uh, they lost all electricity, so uh, to keep up with, to try to keep warm, they use all the blankets they had and also the plastics uh, that they have for uh, products. Yeah. Ah, okay. Just like yes. Arahama. Arahama. But this was a designated shelter. The uh, schools are yeah, yeah. Yeah. All, all schools yeah, in all Japan. All schools are, uh, the students that were here, they put here like an SOS sign and then mm -hmm. some helicopters came and helped them. Sendai City doesn't know what to do with this yet. They don't know how to reconstruct the area. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they don't know. It's not decided yet. So uh, they're just going to let this building here for the time being and then see what happens. The tsunami effect is quite high, so that you have in the first floor a total destruction and that you see still, still the blanket where the kids were covering themselves during the phase after the tsunami, I think it's uh, still very fresh. One has the impression that this event happened really some days ago. This is like supplies that they got and this is rice. Yeah. And uh, this rice, I mean normally yeah. rice you have to boil it and uh, yes. this you can prepare it even with cold water. Oh. So, um, I mean, but again, for Japanese, rice is it's a bit of like a cultural thing. Yes. So, uh, okay. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. So uh, maybe we can start going down. When the tsunami hit, well, of course, the first floor here was affected, but. Um, um, the, the, the shop in itself here, the second floor, it was okay. So, so what did they do? Did they go in the building mm. or did they uh, drive away? Yeah. The, the customers that were here stayed here and they had also people who were around who came here. Uh, at some point you had like 200 people staying here and this became mm -hmm. a shelter. Um, one of the main problems is that it was really cold mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, they had some uh, stoves. But uh, because the aftershocks were continuing so much, mm -hmm. they were really concerned about using them and uh, mm -hmm. causing a fire. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, the cold was the biggest issue yes. here. Okay. Yeah. I, I just asked him about his uh, business, like how he, mm -hmm. how he's managing to, yeah. to, to do his business and how it opened. So he said that 
because the damage here to the second floor was very small, one week after the earthquake, they already decided, okay, let's okay. try to reopen and do some business because people do get <laughs> together here. <coughs> because of the earthquake, the, the, the earth uh, mm -hmm. collapsed. Yes. So uh, th there was a also like a typhoon that hit the area, mm -hmm. and uh, with the typhoon comes the rain as well. So this, unless it say, like lifts the the sea level or the the, mm -hmm. the not the the, 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 the construction, the yeah, so. um, he doesn't really see much development. So he thinks it's gonna take fifteen to twenty mm -hmm. years for the mm -hmm. recovery of yes. the city. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> 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 <laughs>